I uh, expect to pass a cave or pass the emeritus cave. Um, it is good to be in the house of the Lord. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. And I just want y'all to know that God is pleased with world missionary. Just seeing the way that Pastor Caver has allowed God to work, um, the way that the ministers have allowed God to work, and the way that you worship, God is pleased with world missionary. And I do agree that he is binding strongholds, he is bringing deliverance, he is bringing healing, bringing all that stuff to world missionary today. Let's pray. Jesus, I love you. I love you so much. I thank you for I thank you for being who you are. I thank you for being the God of the universe, for being the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I thank you for being all powerful being wonderful yeah. and I thank you that even though you are all those things you care about us yeah. that you came and you loved us and you died for us and you gave your life just simply because you loved us yeah. and because of that we love you too yeah. we thank you and we express our gratitude for everything that you've done for us. And I just ask that you would speak to us today, that you would allow us to experience your love in greater ways, yeah. that we would know what your love looks like, we would know what your love feels like, yes. that we would personally experience your love, and not only that, but that we would be able to share that with others, and so that they too would wanna know what we have, that they would long to have what we have. They would long to see what happened to them, what happened in us. And I just ask that you would speak to us today. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You please turn with me to Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. You please stand when you found it. And reads, And he said to them all, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me will save it. He must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me will save it. Amen. 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 Today I'm going to talk about what it is to be a missionary. And World Missionary Baptist Church as missionary in the name. So I just want to want to talk about what it takes to be a missionary. And yesterday I went to a conference um, put on by the Voice of the Martyrs, which is a group that uh, their sole purpose is to help missionaries that are being persecuted across the world and to not only help them do what they do, but also to bring their story back um, so Christians here in America can know exactly what other Christians around the world are going through. And one of the biggest things I took away was the passion that these people have for the world and the passion that they have for 
for others. Um, and it came from the love of Christ. Um, so I just want you to take a minute and um, just think about what are you passionate about? Maybe what do you cheer for? What makes you get upset? What do you get excited about? And after thinking about that, a lot of times the things that we are passionate about may be football, it may be basketball, it may be sports, it may be the kind of car that you have, the kind of job that you have, you might be passionate about your work. And it's okay to be passionate about things, but are you passionate about Christ more than anything else? What's number one in your life? What do you really care about? I'm talking about what it means to be a missionary. It doesn't have to be across the world. It doesn't have to be across the nation. You can be a missionary right here in Fort Worth, Texas. You can be a missionary in your neighborhood. You can be a missionary on your job. You can be a missionary at your school. You can be a missionary wherever you go. But there are three things you must do before you're able to truly be a missionary. And the first thing is you have to count the cost. You see, it's, it's not easy being a Christian. And so, at this conference, one of the board members of the Voice of the Martyrs, he told us about two different types of uh, missionaries that go and go into persecution. And he said, it's two, one of two things happens. Either they sit down and they count the cost and they realize that Jesus gave his life for me. He gave everything and the least that I can do is go and serve him. And so then they go over there and they get beaten, they get, they get whipped, they get stones thrown at them, they get threatened to be killed, some of them die, but all the while they're still rejoicing, they're still excited because they know they have already counted the cost and they know that it's worth it. And he said there's another type, a kind that they just feel like God has led them to go, and so they go over there, and then they get beaten, or they get a gun put to their head. And then they get so upset and so frustrated that they drop off. And he said that they wouldn't say it themselves, but basically what it all boils down to is they didn't count the cost, and they feel like God let them down. Because they weren't committed. Have you counted the cost? Are you committed? What if that happened to you? What if somebody put a gun to your head and said, are you a Christian? Do you follow Christ? What would you do? What if it wasn't even you? What if it was your mom? What if it was your dad? What if it was one of your children? Would you be able to hold up and say, Jesus Christ is Lord. He's number one in my life. Have you counted the cost? Are you ready? Do you know how far you would take? Because Jesus is worth it. You see in Luke 9, 24, it says that whoever loses his life, whoever saves his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for him will save it. And that's what it's really all about, because Jesus gave it all. He took beatings. He was on the cross. He took the crown of thorns, and he did all of that out of love for us. And so Paul tells us in Romans that it's our reasonable sacrifice. It's the least that we can do is to give our lives for him. And here in America, we're not even facing that. All we have to worry about is I might lose my job or somebody might look at me funny. Are you willing to count the cost? Are you committed to what God wants? When you count the cost, you, when you realize that you are committed, you count the cost, what that does is it gives you a passion for Christ. It gives you a passion beyond anything else. And the reason that is is because of love. And Jesus says that the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God and then to love your neighbor as yourself. And so it's our duty to love. We have to love because of Jesus, because we know that what he did for us, we see that we were messed up and it doesn't matter what we did, it doesn't matter where we were or what we were doing, but he came down and he loved us. 
and out of love for him because he did all that for us, then we're able to love him back. Not only love him back, but we're able to love our brother and sister. We're able to love our neighbor. No matter what they've done to you, no matter what they've said, no matter how they treat you, we have to love. And why do we have to love is because that's the difference between Jesus and any other and all of the other world. That's the difference. That's what makes us different. You see, in Islam, they go around and they, they kill people. They go on suicide missions and they feel like killing people is serving God. God calls us to love. Even if that's happened to us, he calls, he calls us to love those exact people because that's not normal for the world. The Bible says that the foolishness of this world is wisdom to God. And that's what, that's what we have to understand is that we have to love because that is what makes us different. Yeah. Our love for one another and our love for our neighbors. Are we willing? Do we love God enough to do what he says? Do we love God enough to look foolish for him? Do we love God enough to go up to somebody on our job or a stranger and tell them that if they're going through something that it's going to be okay? Yeah. Are we able to go up to them and tell them that you're healed in the name of Jesus? Yeah. Even though we might not see it right then? Uh -huh. Yeah, we'll get crazy looks. We might get crazy looks or they might talk about you or they might treat you different. But are you willing to do that for Christ? Yeah. I mean, he gave his life. It's the least that we can do. Not only must we count the cost, not only must, not only when we count the cost do we get a passion for Christ, but we're also able to rejoice in the suffering. And at the conference yesterday, they showed a video of a place in China where they had just received Bibles, and it was a, a lot of Bibles, and as soon as it was open, people flocked to it. Not only did they flock to it, but when they got it, they hugged it, and they cried over it, and they were excited about getting the Word of God. But yet, we have the Word of God daily. We have the Word of God anywhere, and we don't get that excited. We say we're too busy to read the Word of God, or that we don't want to because we have something else to take care of. When the Word of God should be that important to us. They're not even, even able to have the Word of God, but yet we have it. We are able to read it on a daily basis. We're able to study it and see what God has for us. Is that important to you? We have to, we have to really think, is that important to us? Is the Word of God that important to us where it's the most important thing in our lives? It's more important than our moms, our dads. It's more important than our grandmothers and grandfathers. It's more important than our sons and daughters. It's more important than our cousins. It's more important than our friends. It's more important than our jobs. It's more important than school. It's more important than anything. It has to be the number one priority. And for a lot of these people, when they accept Christ, it becomes real to them. It becomes their life. It's what... It, it becomes a part of them. And uh, one of the speakers, he met his wife because uh, she grew up Christian and she went over to Iran to uh, meet him. And she said that she went over there and she was done with Christianity and she felt so compelled to come to uh, Islam because they were so passionate about what they were doing. They, they were passionate and they cared about it. Are we passionate about Christ? Are we showing our passion for Christ on our jobs? Are we showing our passion for Christ while we're driving down the street? Are we showing our passion for Christ everywhere we go at the grocery store? We need to be showing our passion for Christ. And it becomes their life because there's so much of a drug addiction, so much of the suicidal spirit that they don't have any hope. Mm -hmm. And when talking with one of them, they said, uh, he was asking why, why aren't you being careful about spreading the word? And he said, let them kill me. I was dead anyway. Wow. <laughs> because Jesus came and changed his life around. 
that person was about to commit suicide, but he changed his life around. Isn't that what Jesus did to us? We were dead in our sins. We didn't know what to do. We didn't know where to go. We didn't know anything. We didn't even know that we, we didn't know how to find God, but God came down and found us. He loved on us. And he allowed us to be here another day. He allowed us to be able to walk. He, allowed, he gave us the use of our limbs, and he, he loved on us. And so the least we can do is love him back. And every time they come up with, they, would, they can go into church and knowing that they would be persecuted. There's a story about a church where there are grenades where people would throw them in and they would have to have water buckets ready to throw on them so they could put out the fire and continue praising God. <laughs> and even after that, people would fill the water buckets again in case it happened in that same service. There's stories about people who would go, go out, as soon as they walk out of the church, they have stones thrown at their head, but yet they continue to come and come. And one person was asked, she came back the next week and her head, she had a knot in her head and she, and she was asked, why are you coming back? It's safe for you, for you to be at home and rest. And she said, because I'm safer here with my brothers and sisters. Right. Is the church really your family? Mm. Mm. Do you love the people around you like your brothers and sisters? Do you care for them like you care for your own family? Because that's what Jesus calls us to do. He calls us to love one another. And even in all of that, after they go through all of that, they're rejoicing in that suffering. They're excited because they're able to share the gospel of Christ. They're excited because God found them and he's able to use them. There's, there's a story about somebody that was put in jail in a 99% Muslim country. And, and when talking with her, she said, I'm so excited to be here in prison because I'm the 1% that God is going to use to call the 99% to him. Wow. You might be the only person on your job. You might be the only person in your school striving for God, but that's for a reason. He has you there so you can share the gospel. And we should be excited about sharing the gospel. We should be excited and get funny with this because we're talking about Jesus so much. We should be excited if we get talked about for God. We should be excited about going through different things because God, because he did do that for us. He definitely counted the cost for us. And he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he said, Father, not my will, but your will be done. He counted the cost. He knew exactly what was about to happen to him. But yet he said, not my will, but your will be done. He counted the cost for you and me. And he told Judas, he, when they were sitting at the table, he said, go and do it quickly. He told him to do it. So he knew what was going to happen. He definitely counted the cost. And he also had a passion for us. He had a passion and a strong love for us. Because he allowed that to happen. He allowed them to beat him. He allowed them to spit upon him. He allowed them to take the crown of thorns and put it on his head. He allowed them to crucify him. He allowed them to talk about him, to beat him. And that was just for me and you. Because he had a passion for us. He didn't have any reason to come down. But he loved us yeah. simply because yeah. he loved us. Wow. All right. All right. He was passionate about us. Yeah. And he did all that so we could rejoice with him. Because yeah. now he's sitting on the right hand of God. Yeah. Yeah. And now his kingdom is, is, the, is powerful. Amen. His kingdom is here. Yeah. His kingdom is awesome. His kingdom is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. All because of he went through that. All because he counted the cost and did what it took for me and you. Because he knew the passion that it took. Because he had the love for us. And so that's why it's the least that we can do to count the cost. To know that it doesn't matter what's going on on my job. It doesn't matter if I'm going to get talked about. It doesn't matter if I might 
if I might lose something, if I might lose some friends or lose family, because I've counted the cost. I know what it's going to take. And here in America, we're not even close to being persecuted. We're not close to being our lives being threatened or our family's lives being threatened. So the least we can do is go out and share it with somebody else. The least we can do is tell others how much God loves them. Because when he comes to you and you see how amazing that is, how amazing it is for a God to come down that doesn't have anything, that doesn't have to have anything to do with us. But yet he comes down and he loves us and he dies for us. The least we can do is love him back and say, God, I give you my life. God, every single thing I do is going to be for you. The least we can do is love our brothers and sisters and say, it doesn't matter what you do to me, I forgive you. It doesn't matter if you talk about me, I forgive you. It doesn't matter how bad you treat me, I forgive you because I love you. Because I want you to have what I have. I want you to enjoy the love of God. I want you to have the hope that I have. I want you to share the encouragement that I have. Because God has given it to me freely. Freely I receive, so freely I give to you. It should be so important to us. It should be so important to us that that's the only thing we care about. It's the only thing we care about. I can't emphasize that enough. Yes, we, we go to work, we go to school, we do the things, the daily tasks that we have to do. But the main thing, the thing that really matters is are we living for God? Are we completely committed? Have we counted the cause for Him? Do we have that passion for Him? Do we rejoice when we have to suffer? Because He does say, if I lose my life for Him, I will save you. And that means more than anything in the world. And that's the reason we can rejoice when we suffer. That's the reason we can rejoice when we're going through troubles. We can rejoice if we lose our job. We can rejoice through anything we go through. Because we know that I've lost my life for Him, so I have saved my life, and so now I get to rejoice with Him. I get to be in His kingdom. Not only do I get to experience His kingdom in heaven, but He says to pray that His kingdom come and will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So now I can experience freedom. I can experience life. I can experience joy. I can experience healing. I can experience deliverance. I can the breaking of chains. I can experience the works of God here on earth because of his joy. Because I rejoice in suffering because of him. And I want to leave with one thing. The, the doctor from Iran was talking about uh, a guy that he had talked to and he had found Christ in he had lost his job and ended up finding a new one. And the doctor has a satellite TV show, and that's how a lot of people in Iran get the word of Christ. And he was talking with him, he said, uh, and the guy said, I bet you don't know what I did with my first paycheck. He's like, of course, you provided for your family, you gave them food. And he said, no, that's not what I did. I got the satellite TV because my family needs hope first. And bread second. Wow. Isn't that important to us? Do we care more about the word of God than we care about bread and food? Do we care more about the word of God than we care about uh, the car we drive? Do we care more about the word of God than the type of job that we have? Because if we do what he wants, if we do the things that he has called us to do, he will take care of us because he loves us. And I came across a song this week, and I just, this has really been my prayer and what I really wanted to see um, God, God speak. Um, I want this to be true to my life. Here's my worship, take joy in it.
Make it your dwelling place. I want to put a smile on your face. I present my heart to you. I present my life to you. Would you join in with me? Here's my worship. Take joy in it. Make it your dwelling place. I want to put a smile on your face. I present my heart to you.